So what should the U.S. do? Joining us now are Republican Congressman Thaddeus McCotter of Michigan and Democratic Congressman Elliot Engel of New York. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So this Thank first you. question that I have for you, I'm going to begin with Congressman McCotter. $20 billion in reimbursements. This makes Pakistan, that's since uh, 2001, by the way, this makes Pakistan one of the largest recipients of U.S. aid. So I ask you two questions. One, should we stop that? And do, or two, do you think that Pakistani officials were aware that they were there? Well, to answer the second question first, that's what we're trying to find out, not only who knew, but what elements within the government knew and what might have been trying to obstruct the pursuit of justice of Mr. bin Laden, which answers the first question, is if you act precipitously and simply cut off the aid, what you're going to do is further destabilize a country, many of which, of which many in the population consider themselves being dupes of the United States in the war for freedom against terror. And if we do that, what we will do is take the victory of getting Mr. bin Laden and turn it into a major defeat with a nuclear-armed Pakistan run by a government that is very sympathetic to the goals of al-Qaeda. And Congressman Ingle, what are your thoughts? Did Pakistan know? And what about the money? Well, I think uh, Thad uh, got it about right. Uh, we don't know who knew. Somebody knew. I'm convinced that, that people knew. Uh, you, co you could not have a situation with Osama bin Laden uh, in that uh, compound for five or six years with nobody knowing. Uh, there have long been rogue elements. There have long been... Um, the Pakistan uh, military, that's a military town. Uh, there has uh, long been the intelligence services, you know, running uh, free, uh, perpetrating things like they did in Mumbai. Uh, I think someone ought to know. I think what we need to do, we, we cannot cut off aid to Pakistan, but we need to review our aid to Pakistan. We don't want to uh, throw uh, uh, good money after bad, and I think that... Um, it's not satisfactory that uh, bin Laden was living there near the capital in a military town. Uh, someone knew, and I suspect it's many people, and I suspect it's in uh, the higher echelons of the government. But we need to uh, not do anything precipitously. We need to take a look and uh, find out what the story is and then make judgments accordingly. Well, let's um, take a look at some of the aid. Uh, specifically, let's break it apart for a moment. In 2009, the Obama administration asked Congress to approve a specific fund to help Pakistan's military counter insurgency capabilities within their own borders. In 2009 and 2010, that was $1.1 billion that was approved for the fund. Just last month, another $800 million. Under the conditions of the 2009 law, though, no security aid was to be given to Pakistan in 2011 through 2014 unless the U.S. Secretary of State made certain findings, including, and this is a quote, that Pakistan had demonstrated a sustained commitment to and is making significant efforts towards combating terrorist groups. So, Congressman McCotter, do you not think that they violated that and will they receive that money, just that amount? Well, again, we have to find out, was this a pervasive uh, now, was there pervasive knowledge amongst the Pakistani government that this was the case, that bin Laden was there, and was there an active attempt on the part of the entire Pakistani government to stop this, or was this an ISI rogue operation? What did the military know, the military that is actually dealing with insurgents that are committing suicide bombings within Pakistan to destabilize the government? But when we talk about the military aid, we also have to realize that we should be focusing on the development of democratic and economic institutions at the grassroots level that actually affect the Pakistani citizenry or large-scale products that actually projects that actually affect the Pakistani citizenry because otherwise what you will continue to have is a dichotomy between a government that even if it is very pro-American will find that its citizenry is anti-American and that is non-sustainable and will inure to the detriment of the United States strategic interests. Mm -hmm. And Congressman Engel, that, that's basically what the uh, Kerry Luger Berman bill is supposed to do, shift the focus to civilian aid, authorizes 7.5 billion over five years. How how do we determine exactly where that goes? Well, we have to monitor it carefully. Look, we give foreign aid uh, not out of the goodness of our hearts. Uh, we do it because we make a judgment that it's good for us. Um, if we are just uh, pouring money down a drain uh, and uh, the country is not doing anything, then obviously it's not good for us. But Pakistan is a nuclear power. It's not a country we can just turn our backs on. 
It's right next door to Afghanistan. As long as we're in Afghanistan, what happens in Pakistan uh, affects Afghanistan, and therefore we just don't want to be uh, penny wise and pound foolish. Uh, but we do have to monitor it. We need to be very, very careful, uh, and we, uh, we need to have a whole review. I'm, I'm not happy. I, I'm really not happy, but I just don't think we can, you know, uh, uh, pull the rug out from, from under us when we're fighting the war on, on terror. Uh, there are too many radical elements in Pakistan. Uh, we have drones, for instance, going into Pakistan and, and killing uh, terrorists. Uh, we need the cooperation, at least uh, moderate cooperation, of the Pakistani government. I don't think if we just cut everything off that we can get it. And again, we're not fools. We're not going to just give right. the money away. But, but we need to, uh, to be uh, sustained uh, having contacts with and, and in Pakistan. So a lot of questions left to be answered. Thank you both so much for joining us, Congressman McCotter and Congressman Ingle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Protesters.